Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our FSA Ingolstadt no fear save, uh, where we're going to spend a little bit of time today looking around at the squad and taking a look at how things are and uh, looking at setting up a tactic really quickly. Uh, now, just so you know, um, in terms of tactical creation, um, I am far from a tactical wizard. Um, I have spent some time uh, over the past few days looking at the work of uh, Cleon Hobson, um, who you may know from a view from the touchline, um, including uh, reading through his book and looking at some of the things that he said um, online about tactical creation and some of the tips that he has. Um, there are some ideas that I like. There are some things I don't think I quite understand yet. And there are some things that he recommends doing that we're not going to do. For example, I am not planning on uh, spending the first 15 minutes of every match playing it in comprehensive mode and showing you every single pass and everything that's going on. This would also drive me nuts. I have a life um, outside of Football Manager, believe it or not. Um, however, there are some uh, basic ideas and concepts that he comes up with that I think I want to sort of take along and we want to sort of adopt. Um, and so uh, with that, we'll go right on over here to our game screen. You can see we have done nothing. I have not advanced the game once. This is probably the longest I've ever gone without actually advancing a game of Football Manager. Um, as I believe I mentioned last time, we have abysmal team cohesion, a very poor club atmosphere. Nobody likes me because um, I have no influence um, and I have no experience at all, which is very realistic. Um, and uh, the board still welcomes me into my role and um, happily has given me a transfer budget of zero. Um, and with that, we'll take a quick look at the squad. So I spent quite a few, uh, quite a bit of time over the last couple of days thinking about this squad and looking at it, thinking about what it is that we could do to make something sort of work. Um, we've got some holes in the squad. And if you look closely here at the positions, I think you can sort of uh, see for yourself where they are. Um, we have um, quite a few players who can play as, um, as a center back and you can play as right back. In terms of left back, we have eh, one, two, maybe a third. Not very much. One of the problems that we have that I mentioned last time is that several of these players are injured, including our star center back, uh, Visar Mus Muslil, who is out for six weeks. Now, that's going to be a problem, um, as we will see very soon, because uh, when we look at our schedule, we see that we have our first match in uh, about three weeks. Um, so guess what? We don't have six weeks to sit around and wait for the uh, star center back to get better. We need players who can play against Bayreuth right away. Um, we're going to need players against Borussia Dortmund's Fai, and we're going to need to continue to have players who can play without getting injured so frequently. Um, this is a problem. We have other players who I think are quite good, such as Ditkin, a new signing, who's out for four months with his own injury. This is problematic. We got a um, goalkeeper, Funk, who's out for five weeks. Um, we got him on a free transfer. Um, <laughs> So we have some concerns already with numerous injuries here in the first team squad. Um, Beck is not going to be available um, until he comes over from Denmark. That's going to be the beginning of August. Uh, so that will also be after the first uh, match of the season. This makes things, again, it kind of puts us in a lurch in terms of what exactly it is that we want to do. Now, I've gone through already by myself, and I've marked several players off. The thing that I've done, and you know this if you've been watching the channel, reading the blog, and if you've been following what I do, um, the reason why I've marked these players is because they are either inconsistent, they are prone to injury, or they dislike big matches. So we'll look at one at random, look at Calvin Brockelman, and we can see right away that he is fairly susceptible to injuries. Um, he loves big matches, though, and is consistent. The reason why I've marked these players off the way that I have is because long term, these are the players that we really want to kind of move away from. I don't really want to have a squad of players who don't like playing in the big matches. I don't want to have a whole bunch of players who are going to get injured all the time. And I don't want to have a lot of players who are inconsistent. Now, the first team doesn't look too bad, but when we go over here to Ingolstadt Zwei, you can see the extent of the damage. All over the place, we have players who are mostly inconsistent, players who I don't think are going to develop well, and players who unfortunately don't have a whole lot of transfer value um, fortunately for us, they're not on a lot of wages. Um, some of these players with um, contracts that began quite some time ago and that are expiring, say, in a year, maybe even two, who are not looking the best, we're going to move on. That's the strategy because, as I mentioned last time, when we look, say, at Selman El Basit, um, we can't see any star ratings anywhere. We can't see, is this guy better or worse? What do we think about this guy's potential? We can see a couple little things about this. We can see that, well, you know, he's homegrown a club. That's one thing. Um, uh, but he's operating at the regional Liga level, which is not good. He's also not consistent. 
and he's a peripheral figure in the squad. For a guy who's 21, who might be able to make some sort of progress in the future, but we're not quite sure, I'm not certain how much time we really want to spend uh, trying to develop this player. Uh, my thought is that this sort of player we should probably move on from. He's been around here for a while. He's not really done too much. He's been on loan back in, uh, looks like, back in Finland. Um, and, I mean... I don't know. We're, we're going to probably move away from this type of player and instead use our precious development resources on players who we think actually have a potential for moving forward. Now, the under-19s are um, a very similar story. Actually, we have a lot of players with a lot of little issues. Um, and uh, these are players who are maybe not quite so easy to move on. Those that are under 18, maybe we can. If they're 16 or 17, we might keep them around. These 18-year-olds, especially the ones that I'm like, I don't know about this guy, we might try to look for loans for them. One thing I didn't mention at the beginning is that we do have all of the German leagues loaded. And this is essential when it comes to playing in Germany. Same thing in France. The reason why is because you really want the second team to actually have a schedule. You want them to actually play against other teams. As you can see, they're in the Bayern Süd. Um, and they are playing against other teams, including other second teams. They can compete with them. We can see how good or how poorly our players are playing. This is much different than the standard arrange a bunch of friendlies for your two squad and sort of see how it happens. That's not what we're doing here. We want them to play proper matches. We want them to play against proper teams. We want to know how they are playing. And so that brings us over here to the tactic. Now, I'll show you before we go into any detail on the tactic, the screen that I saw when it came up. Um, we see choose a tactical style here, of course. They're talking about we could try wing play. I like the idea of wing play. You know why they recommend wing play, right? It's because we have tons and tons of wingers in the squad. I mean, I don't know what's happened in Ingolstadt, right? I don't understand what the management in the past was thinking about, but for one reason or another, we decided at this club that we love wingers, and we especially love right wingers. Everybody can play on the right wing. Um, this is a trend. When I managed um, Ingolstadt on my own in FM21, we had the same problem. I don't know about that. I like the idea of wing play. We're going to have to use these guys, but I don't know if I want to have a tactic that's based just around wing play. I want to see something that may be a little bit more complex. We can do that route one with, with the uh, direct uh, passing and sort of just move the ball up to the forward and have him shoot. And that's kind of going into you know my mindset as I'm looking at the type of tactic I want to make. And also there's a question about the counterattack. But again, the problem with the counterattack that I have is that the board wants us to play attacking football, not defensive football. Um, and as we saw yesterday, when we're looking at our season preview for the league, um, when that comes up, we are among the favorites to win the whole league. We have a squad that is stronger and that has more um, ability than the other squads in the league. Why in the world would we play a counterattacking system if we expect to dominate possession and if we should expect to be able to attack? We're not going to do that. So, having thought through that, having read what Cleon had to say, I decided to use a somewhat modified um, vertical ticky tacka system. Um, I haven't actually gone fully through this and changed everything and looked at all of the possibilities. It's a little bit overwhelming, and really, football manager is sort of like learning how to ride a bike or learning how to use Linux or learning anything like that. It's better for you to go and to start doing it and to give it a try um, instead of sitting around thinking about theory all the time. Um, and uh, so this is the try that we're going to have. We'll have um, two inverted wingers um, instead of, I think they were in inside forwards. We'll try this with inverted wingers first, but I'll take a quick look at these wingers. If we don't have that sort of foot combination that we want, we'll just change these over to normal wingers. That's perfectly fine. Um, we'll have one in attack, one in support, and then the corresponding fullbacks instead of wingbacks. We'll try this with fullbacks. We'll have one in attack, one in support. I decided to go with a halfback here in defense instead of a deep line playmaker or something like a defensive one midfielder. Um, just to give it a try, um, I'm not actually very familiar with the halfback role. We'll see what happens. I have this uh, sweeper keeper on defense instead of on support. Um, one of the reasons why I'm doing this back in defense and one reason why we're on a balanced mentality is because I'm thinking that we may not want to have a very high defensive line. I watched a number of clips of Ingolstadt and Ulfier from um, their uh, exit season in the Zweite Bundesliga last year. And what I can tell you is that frequently when the opposition was scoring goals, I saw Ingolstadt defenders who were really like trying to race all the way back um, to uh, desperately defend shots that were coming. 
I don't know if I want to see that. Um, I would much rather um, have a defensive line that maybe stays back a little bit more and um, isn't always so frantic in trying to uh, recover. So we'll play around with those settings. I know that this is set on high defensive line. I'll play around and look at this and we'll see sort of what happens um, in the first couple of matches of the season. Um, I thought for a while about having a Mazala on attack. Um, after thinking about it, I thought let's start it off with support, see where we go from there. Um, I haven't thought much about this box-to-box -box midfielder, if that's what we want, or if we want to do, you know, something else, maybe a uh, roaming playmaker or some other type of role. Um, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do, so we will um, take a quick look and uh, see what our uh, choices are. We could actually also have um, this player come back and play the Regista role and have the Mazala play a little bit more in the center. So, I don't know, we'll see what we want to do. Um, and then uh, in front, we'll have an attacking forward. So um, Cleon Hobson, and I'll link to this uh, below underneath um, today's story. Cleon Hobson on View from the Touchline is a really interesting article about the art of possession in FM23. Um, and in his uh, setup with his um, uh, article, he has a uh, uh, false nine up here on uh, uh, support role. Um, it's a little bit similar to what we have here, except that the Mazala is the attacker. Now, if you read a lot of his work, you see that kind of his dream is to have a Mazala who outpaces the striker in terms of scoring and who ends up being really where the offense is coming from. We're not going to do that with this team. I'm not really that interested in that type of experimentation. Um, I'm a little bit interested in sort of playing around a little bit with these rules and seeing what we can get with them, but... I don't know so much about this, like, oh, well, we really want, you know, this player doing this. Or, I mean, it doesn't matter to me really where the goals come from. I figure we probably want to have them come from the striker. We have some players who are pretty good. Um, this guy, um, uh, Pascal Testrut, is um, listed as one of the better strikers in the league. He's 31, so not really kind of the age that I want. I also am concerned about him because when I look at his stats, I'm seeing 12, 15, 18 goals once in the Zweite Bundesliga. Maybe here in the Dritte Bundesliga, we can see about 20 goals or so from him. I don't know. I worry. He's a little bit older. You know, how much longer do we have for him? Yeah, unlikely to improve in the future. I'm a little bit more worried about this guy starting to deteriorate as a player. And then what are we going to do? Um, one last thing really quick before I let you go. I wanted to look really quickly here at the uh, transfer history. So ignore my new head of youth development. Um, and uh, at some of the things that have happened here. So... Um, as you can see, a lot of these players are actually younger that have come in. I have the red flag or yellow flags on them because you know, I'm not so sure about this one. This guy came in injured. This guy came in injured. I don't know about this transfer policy, guys. Like We need to look at more young players who don't suck, and we have now a lot of young players who suck. Um, my biggest concern, though, is not that. It is the transfers out. So my boys, the guys I remember playing with in FM21, will be like Heinloth. Kutzka, um, Eckert, uh, Maximilian Wolfram, though I usually sold him at the beginning of the season, uh, Fatih Kaya, um, uh, Bilbia, um, and a number of others who left beforehand, and of course, Yen Drush. Um, all of these guys left, many of them left on free transfers, um, probably because of the uh, uh, very poor showing that Ingolstadt had in the Zweite Bundesliga. But this is a problem. We can't have this happen. I mean, some of these players like Eckert, Eckert was a star player, he's 25. He was a great player for this team. You know, I mean, you got to hold on to these guys, you know? That, that's my thing. We, we need a change of scenery around here. We need a change of pace. We need to stop this sort of thing from happening. I don't want to go away from here seeing a whole bunch of free transfers going out. We get no money for anybody. We have nobody, no transfer budget at all. And then we're spending money on Tobias Beck, who's going to be injured. You know, I, I, let's not do that. Let's get um, younger players, although I guess he is only 20. Let's continue to buy young players, and um, let's see if we can get some people with good mentalities who really want to be here so that we can change up the squad. There you have it. Very quick video. Um, in lieu of having a big transfer special, I thought I would just walk through things with you quickly. If you like it, click the like button. You can subscribe here on YouTube, leave a comment. Please come down to and check out the blog. Like I said, we're doing things differently. We're doing it FM Stories mode, which is something that I haven't seen other YouTubers do. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Uh, so come check out the blog and check out our work, and I will see you tomorrow with the first game of the season. Bye.